Hey guys, Phil here at Woods Tree Farm, and I hope you find this video today very helpful. I've been struggling to figure out how long do I need to run my sprinklers in order to properly irrigate my Christmas trees. Now, right now it is spring 2020. We haven't had to irrigate yet, but it gets hot in Central Virginia. I know I will have to irrigate at some point during this summer just like i did last year last year we had a bit of a drought there was a about two and a half three months maybe even three and a half months i don't remember where we got very little rain at all and we needed to irrigate so i bought and i have videos of this i bought a basic trash pump i set up my own little irrigation system i split the output of the trash pump up three ways to power three different sprinkler heads but it never really seemed like we got enough water down on the ground and I'm um, putting some thought in this year to think about what improvements do I need to make to my irrigation system and I started to do some math in fact I'll show you my little scratch piece of paper here right I started to do some math thinking about okay how much area does each sprinkler cover and how much flow is coming out of each sprinkler in a minute or in an hour and then what does that mean in terms of how much water is actually getting down on the ground and those of you who watch my channel if you've been in agriculture in, in your life and you're more familiar with this kind of stuff you might think this video is stupid but I have no background in agriculture at all so for me to come up with this uh, I'm kind of just starting at ground zero I did a little bit of research I found a few different formulas out there about how to go about calculating this but my process was a little bit different than anything else that I found out there so I wanted to share it with you and then I also took this and turned it into a calculator that's on Google Sheets. I'll drop the link in the description for the, the video below. And you can go into the Google Sheet, just put in three variables, and then you can get an output that'll answer the question, how long do I need to run my irrigation system? Whether you're in agriculture or not, this formula should work for you. If you're really just trying to get to the bottom of like, for example, if I want to put an inch of precipitation, an inch of water on my yard or on my garden or in my field, it doesn't really matter. The area doesn't matter. If I want to put an inch down, how long do I need to run my irrigation in order to get that inch down? That's really what I'm after today. And I'll show you my process. Uh, but before we get into it, let me just do a little quick recap of what we've been working with over this past year, year and a half with our own irrigation system. I'll talk briefly about what changes I'm going to make going forward. And I'll have a video in the future of us actually implementing those changes. And then hopefully I'll be able to do a recap of how effective those changes were. So last year, as I mentioned, we had this basic trash pump. I split it up three different ways, and then we just used these regular uh, residential style sprinklers like this one. That sprinkler I got off Amazon. It's a simple little uh, sprinkler head. It goes in a full circle. It worked perfect for what we needed at the time. And uh, they're very cheap and very easy to, to install. I even made my own sprinklers. It's actually another video, and you can check that out over here. I'll drop a link to that in the video uh, description below. But those uh, that setup didn't really do what we, well, I was going to say it didn't do what we needed it to do, but it did. But when we ran it, especially during the heat of the summer, we always felt like we needed more. And I just kind of attributed to the fact that everything was bone dry. It was really hot last year. And I thought, you know, it's just maybe the capacity of the system doesn't have enough to keep up. But now that I've quantified it, I can really understand why we, we were you know, really at odds with the weather last year and the system that we had and the way that it was configured had no way possible that we could have kept up with the water demands for our trees during the drought that we had last year. So in my scenario, let me just show you a little bit about what we were up against. So I estimated our sprinklers could um, shoot out about 30 feet okay so if you're going to calculate the area of the circle that's watered by the sprinkler you know remember these sprinklers are going around in a complete circle you're going to measure that area 
Think back to geometry class, to pi r squared gives you the uh, area of a circle. So that 30 foot radius from that sprinkler uh, watered about 2,827 square feet. Now, if uh, our sprinkler, I calculated how much water is coming out of that sprinkler in a minute. I just held the sprinkler inside of a bucket and in a minute it was only about four gallons. And that's the real drawback for an agricultural setting. The drawback of a residential style sprinkler. If you want to get more volume down on the ground, you got to get a bigger sprinkler. So those residential sprinklers were only putting down, putting out about four gallons a minute. So over 2,800 square feet, four gallons a minute, that is, you know, four, four minutes, 60 minutes in an hour, 240 gallons in an hour. 240 gallons kind of sounds like a lot, but when you spread it out over 2,800 square feet, it was a little over a tenth of an inch. So if we were trying to figure out how long would it take for us to get an inch of water down on those trees in that 2,800 square feet, it would actually take over seven hours. So that's really what we were up against last year. We were moving our sprinklers every two to three hours or so. And the pump that we have, uh, that's a gas powered pump, it only lasts about two and a half hours per tank. So we were constantly refilling the tank, constantly moving the sprinklers. And what we've managed to figure out now by actually quantifying all of this is that we never left the sprinklers in one place long enough to get a good quantity of water down on the ground. So. I encourage you if you are, you know, whether you're watering a lawn or a garden or Christmas trees, whatever, quantify how much water is actually coming out of any individual sprinkler head during a minute. Try to figure out what that flow rate is in terms of gallons per minute. And if you have that and you have the distance that your sprinkler uh, shoots, the, the, the uh, area, the coverage area of your sprinklers, then you can easily quantify how long it'll take. Okay, so as I mentioned before, you just jump in the calculator here. You just need to know how much do we wanna put on the ground? Let's say it's an inch, I can put one there. If it's an inch and a half, if it's really hot or two inches, you can put that number there, it doesn't really matter. The sprinkler radius, how far does your sprinkler shoot? And again, this calculator assumes that we're dealing with a full circle. Uh, if you're not, uh, if your sprinklers aren't set up with a full circle, you'll have to adjust this math based on the percentage of the circle that you're dealing with. I'll leave that up to you. Everything I'm doing is in full circles, so I'm leaving it here. So my sprinkler radius, I estimate that my sprinkler shoots out about 30 feet. And then my sprinkler flow rate, I mentioned before, is four gallons per minute. So the calculator from here does the rest. You only need to edit those three yellow fields. And the numbers that I just mentioned to you before, 2,800 square feet is the area that I'm watering with this one sprinkler. It's putting out about 240 gallons per hour, and that is an hourly equivalent of 0.136 inches. So how long would it take to get this, um, this area an inch and a half of water because that's what the calculator is currently saying it would actually take 11 hours so yeah that sprinkler that we have set up is just going to take forever <laughs> in order to get that amount of water down on the ground so this might be why if you're a christmas tree grower and you talk to other christmas tree growers many of them say yeah don't even bother watering there's just no way you can do it and keep up with it this might be the reason why. You're really gonna need a high capacity pump. You're really gonna need to pump a lot of water. Now, if you're going tree by tree and you're watering each individual tree, the demands are not gonna be this high because you can focus the water in a more concentrated area. But if you're irrigating, if you're just broadcast irrigating the way that I am with a sprinkler system, you really do need to put a lot of water down on the ground. And this just reinforces that. So I uh, hope you found this interesting. I hope you found this helpful. If you got any questions about how I came up with this, or if you think I've done anything wrong, or if I've miscalculated anything here, by all means, let me know. Uh, I'll keep this uh, calculator link out there. And if I get any feedback on adjustments that need to be made to this calculator, um, I'll go ahead and do that. I'll keep the link to the same. All right, so I know going forward, we're going to have to dramatically ramp up our irrigation strategy if we're gonna keep up with these hot Central Virginia summers that we have. Uh, we are gonna do some experimentation with some bigger sprinkler heads using the same pump. 
Uh, that pump is supposed to have capacity of doing 150 or so gallons per minute or 146, something like that. So it has plenty of capacity. What I don't know because it's a trash pump is if it has enough pressure to move that much water through the sprinklers the way that we need it to. So we're going to try some bigger heads first. Uh, we're going to try some different piping first because we ran everything through three quarter inch lines before. We're going to try... Um, those two things first and see what impact it has, see what impact it has on flow rate and output and our ability to sufficiently irrigate uh, an area before we investigate uh, buying a bigger pump. So that's our plan. And uh, I'll, now that I've got this calculator, I have a pretty good benchmark and a pretty good system here I can use to quickly calculate in the future, how long do I need to let my irrigation system run? So if you got any questions again, leave those below. If you got any comments about the methodology in this video, if you have any feedback about the calculations or any criticism or whatever, leave that in the comments below. And if I need to make any edits or adjustments to the calculator, just let me know that as well. Until next time, I'll see you on the next video. I hope you guys have a great day, great night, great season. And yeah, if you haven't already, give this video a like, hit that subscribe button, and hit the bell icon next to the subscribe button if you want to get notified of our future videos. So that's all for today. Thanks, guys. I'll see you on the next one.